What's up, Fight Fans? This is Albert with Under the Hand Wraps. So, I'm laying in my bed the other day, and I'm thinking to myself, Canelo Triple G2, is this ever going to get done? And my enthusiasm for the fight had waned. Obviously, I was at the first fight, had a great time. It was an epic fight week. People were pumped. People were stoked. The crowd was insane. It was bananas. The whole promotion, the press conferences, the media workouts were just, everything was big. Everything was grand. This was a huge scale event. This was an event to behold. And then, well, that happened. Canelo test positive. We didn't think we were going to get the fight. Fight got canceled. The whole world of boxing is revolving around two different sides of the boxing spectrum. You had the pro Canelo crowd. You had the pro Triple G crowd. Everybody had their own fighter. Everybody was rooting for one team. Everybody had an excuse. Everybody was right. Everybody was wrong. It really didn't matter. But at the end of the day, Tom Loeffler did what a promoter does, and he got his man a fight. And at the end of the day, Eric Gomez did what a promoter does and he got his man a fight these two came together golden boy and 360 tom loffler put together the fight they made the things happen that needed to happen word on the split was 57.5 to canelo 42.5 to triple g triple g on principle demanded a 50 50 split and you can say that he was right to demand that i mean canelo tested positive for performance enhancing substances. Everybody's an expert now on clenbuterol. I'm sure you got posters of what clenbuterol looks like, its effects and its performance enhancing capabilities. Uh, posters hung on your wall. Everybody knows everything about clenbuterol now because Google is your friend and my friend also. The original split, if the fight would have took, back, took place back in May, would have been 65-35 for Canelo because at the time the first fight was made Golovkin just wanted the fight to be made so he accepted the demands of Canelo who obviously was the bigger attraction and the star so he merited that 65-35 now with the reputation tainted that star power that draw power did it wane I don't know if it was that so much as it was the credibility the credibility waned a little bit Golovkin and Loeffler were right to demand the 50%. By not getting the 50%, they take the 42.5, but there were details of the deal not made public. I'm sure Golden Boy seeing this as an opportunity to save face for Canelo did so so that he can get back in the ring with Golovkin on an even kill with no controversy. He enrolled in VADA year-round testing. Golovkin's enrolled in VADA year-round testing. This can take away any type of stain that the positive clenbuterol tests made on his character and now beat him. Is it worth the extra money? You bet your ass it's worth it. If Canelo can come in and beat Triple G, well, all of what happened in the past is gone because he would have beaten him. He would have beaten him on a documented good uh, cycle uh, in between fights. He, there would be no traces of any type of performance enhancing substances. And he could say that I would have beaten him all along. Had he not took the fight, then the stain of the positive result follows him for the rest of his career in a coulda, shoulda, woulda type scenario. I had the opportunity to sit down for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with Tom Loeffler and talk exactly about the Canelo Triple G situation. This is how it went. Okay, deal got made. Yeah. Uh, the details of the deal weren't uh, put out, mm -hmm. um, but widely disseminated that uh, it, the split was 57-5, 42-5. Uh, were there any other parts of the deal that were made to sweeten the pot for Golden Boy? Well, that was the last offer for Golden Boy. That was the offer that didn't get accepted by Triple G. Um, they had a deadline, and uh, Triple G said you know, he wanted 45%. Uh, he would sign immediately. He would have signed a month ago. Uh, he felt he was a champion. 
he really won it 50-50 because he felt he was a champion. Canelo's a challenger. Canelo has the uh, the pay-per-view history, but uh, Triple G is considered the best middleweight in the world, has the world titles, is a unified champion, and if Canelo wants those titles, especially after he made so many concessions to get the just to get the first fight, then to get the rematch in May, and then after Canelo got suspended, Triple G really felt disrespected. He felt that Canelo disrespected the sport, disrespected him, you know, the Triple G side. And uh, after all the hoops we jumped through for uh, to save that Cinco de Mayo show here uh, in, in, at StubHub, uh, Gennady was very adamant. He said, uh, you know, it's 50-50 and, and I'll take the fight. Uh, after that, uh, he said, you know what, in order to make sure that Canelo doesn't have any excuses, he's going to uh, accept 45% to uh, to make the fight happen. Even though Triple G is the champion, he'll give Canelo, he'll let Canelo think that he's the A-side by giving him the majority of the uh, of the split. It, um, it uh, you know, it's the same split like uh, when Cotto was a champion, Cotto got 55%. Here, Gennady is a champion. We proved we could do a much bigger show than the Cotto fight. Cotto-Canelo was a great fight. Mexico versus Puerto Rico. It did uh, great numbers in the gate and and uh, on pay-per-view, but uh, Triple G and Canelo did much higher numbers. So he felt justified. He proved the value that he brings to the table. He's the champion. He's not only the, the WBC champion like Cotto was, but he was a unified champion and considered the best middleweight. So it's a huge opportunity for Canelo. Look, if Canelo wins on September 15th, all of a sudden he's at the top of the boxing world. He's the best middleweight champion. And uh, it's a huge win for, for Canelo. Gennady feels very confident. He's always wanted the Canelo fight. He wanted the Canelo rematch. But then it became a matter of principle. And he told me specifically, this is what I want. Um, you know, and, and uh, he was unwavering. We already had a deal in place with Frank Warren and Billy Joe Saunders that if the Canelo fight didn't happen, that we would shift. Uh, and Gennady felt out of respect uh, to boxing and... Uh, uh, the sport and uh, fighting uh, an undefeated champion like Billy Joe Saunders and trying to unify another title uh, was just as good as the financial side with fighting uh, Canelo. Naturally, he doesn't have the same profile, the same financial rewards, but uh, that's where Gennady really stuck to his principles, that uh, he was just as happy fighting Billy Joe Saunders, who was undefeated, who was a champion, that he can say, I'm fighting the best in the sport. Uh, as he is to, to fight Canelo. This is just on a completely different level, and and uh, the boxing fans uh, are the winners here. I think the sport of boxing uh, is a winner because uh, there's no better ambassador for the sport of boxing than Triple G. And, uh, you know, we worked out once the deal was dead. It was literally about an hour that uh, I told Frank Warren that the uh, fight's not going to happen with Canelo. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, sign this agreement. And then uh, Eric Gomez called me back. Uh, like I said, I was gone for about an hour. And uh, he said he had one more solution to make Triple G happy and also to uh, satisfy the side uh, what Canelo was looking for. And, and that's how we got the deal done. But uh, I got to give Gennady credit. He, uh, most fighters would have jumped at the opportunity at this financial, not only the financial side, but on the publicity, uh, you know, to, to take the biggest fight in the sport of boxing. You know, many fighters never get the opportunity to fight uh, on a stage uh, of that magnitude. And so it's not really a boxing match, it's an international sporting event. This is gonna transcend sports when uh, these two guys get back in the ring and there was such, such a controversial decision in the first time that everyone wants to see the second fight and Canelo now is promising a knockout. Triple G doesn't wanna leave it in the judges' hands. Uh, the second time around he felt uh, that he was wronged by uh, uh, at least two of the judges and uh, he's going to make an even more uh, dominant performance uh, with the rematch and uh, not leave it to chance, not leave it to uh, three individuals to decide his fate. And so I think we'll see a lot of uh, fireworks. This, this rematch has uh, such, it, it just feels so much bigger than the first fight. The first fight, they had a lot of respect for each other. Uh, they trained together, they sparred together, and they both respect each other as world-class athletes. Uh, now, with everything that's gone on with the suspension, with some of the things that Triple G said and, and how Canelo responded, the gloves are off, literally the gloves are off in this promotion. 
and um, that's what uh, that the that's what the fans reacted to. That's what the media is reacting to. Triple G was just in Moscow. He was at the opening ceremonies, uh, invited by Hublot, uh, the opening ceremonies uh, for the World Cup. Uh, so he is truly an international figure, and uh, you put his fan base together with Canelo's fan base, and that's what makes this a mega event. Uh, now you said uh, you thought the deal was dead, uh, and then. Eric Gomez I knew, I knew the deal was dead. Eric said, okay, he's gonna, they're going to go make the Jacobs fight. And I told him, we'll, we'll make the Saunders fight. So it, it was dead. It literally, there was no bluffing at that point. There was a lot of posturing leading up to it. You know, they had, uh, you know, come to 40%. Then they had made a 42% with uh, like 2.5% for a, for uh, the winner. And then they said, okay, 42.5% guaranteed. And then uh, Gennady kept saying no. He's like, look, Tom, you know, I even offered, I even offered, look, gee, we need to take this fight. I'll, I'll make up some of the difference on my side. And he's like, no, it's out of principle. It's got to come from Canelo. It's got to come from Golden Boy. Uh, he felt like he wasn't treated the right way uh, the first time, uh, especially with the decision. And uh, out of principle, he stuck to his guns. And I have to give him uh, a ton of credit for that. And you said you guys came up with a solution. Uh, what was that solution? I can't really go into details. That was one of the agreements that uh, I had with Eric Gomez. But uh, you, suffice it to say that Triple G got what uh, he was looking for because he wouldn't have uh, agreed uh, other than that. And he made that clear. Otherwise, we could have agreed a long time ago and uh, or conceded a long time ago. Uh, he felt he made enough uh, concessions. Um, as I mentioned, the first fight, the second fight that was scheduled for May 5. And then when, when Canelo, you know, for whatever reason you believe uh, that uh, that uh, illegal substance got into a system, you know, it's his responsibility when you're at that, Triple G believes when you're at that level of competition, whether it's boxing, whether it's soccer, whether it's bicycling, whatever it is, you're responsible for what goes into your system and, you know, the top echelon of athletes, they're in a position where they know what goes into their system, you know, uh, they can afford the best training camps. And, and that's why Gennady thought it just was unacceptable for uh, the fight to be canceled under those circumstances. And he really wanted to prove a point. He said, uh, look, you know, Canelo needs, he really feels that Canelo needs him to rehabilitate his image. If Canelo would have fought anyone else, whether it's Danny Jacobs, whether it's Spike O'Sullivan, whoever he would have fought, it would have never rehabilitated. It would have never gotten his image back to where now he can redeem himself. Now Canelo's under VADA testing, uh, strict VADA testing, as is Triple G. And um, the only way Canelo can rehabilitate his image is to fight Triple G, and that, that's what's happening now. Do you think, that, at least right into my next question, do you think that... Uh that image, the damage taken to his image, uh, is one of the reasons why uh, Canelo and Golden Boy ultimately budged on the 65-35. And do you think that uh, Canelo, Canelo's value is tainted because of what just happened I mean, with the positive test? Well, there was a, there was a lot of backlash, uh, actually starting from the first fight. After the decision, I've never seen Canelo get booed by his own fans uh, like he did after they read the decision. The fans thought that uh, Triple G won the fight. The fans thought that uh, he should have uh, he should have gotten the decision, and it started from there. Then, when he tested positive, the way I look at it is, if Triple G had tested positive with his punching power, and regardless of what the circumstances are, he would have gotten persecuted by the media, by the fans. I mean, they would have torn him apart, and uh, they would have said, oh, I knew there was something behind the punching power. But, you know, now that Canelo tested positive, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, uh, I think it's definitely a huge blow to his, uh, to his image, uh, to his fan base. And, and now he's got, he's the one, the burden is on him to prove that he can fight at that same level that he did in the first fight. Now that he's under the strict testing of Vada, and uh, to prove that uh, there's no... Uh, illegal substance in, substances in his body, and, and that's uh, that's the same position that uh, Triple G took. That uh, you know Canelo needs the fight with him in order to rehabilitate uh, uh, his image. And uh, even if Canelo loses this fight, I think his image will be 
much better because of the Mexican fans or his fan base will uh, respect him for taking the fight and not going a different route where he could have taken a much easier fight than, uh, than Triple G. From the outside looking in, there's a lot of animosity. Uh, do you think that there's, or do you, do you see uh, how observers uh, can view that there's like hostile forces working against each uh, other? There's the, this, is, this isn't a smoke screen. <laughs> they don't like each other anymore. Uh, they, you know, as I said, the first promotion, they had respect. Look, now he still respects Canelo's skills. He just, in his mind, there's a question. Was it natural, the first fight? You know, his physique looked different. Even in the Chavez fight, looked different. Um, so those are the questions in, in Gennady's mind. And uh, that's what uh, Canelo has to prove. And uh, it's not just only about the image. You know, going back to the last question, it's not just about Canelo's image. But look, Canelo, Canelo's not going to lose money on this fight. This is probably going to be his biggest payday. The last fight was definitely his biggest payday of his career. And now he's still getting the majority of the split. And uh, this, with the bigger promotion and, and just uh, their uh, perception from the fans, and, and uh, you know, everyone was talking about it, you know, whether it's at the gym or whether it's on the street. I hear people talking about Triple G and Canelo just out of the blue, not even knowing that I'm associated with Triple G. And, and this is one of those events, those sporting events, that really is going to transcend boxing and take it to a different level because uh, this, is, this is good for the sport of boxing. It's the best, fighting the best. Now with the VADA testing during the entire time, not just when the contracts are signed, but during the entire time, uh, we'll know that both these guys are clean and uh, we'll see how they perform uh, in the ring. And, and this is really what the sport needs. Uh, this is a huge shot in the arm for boxing. These are the type of fights that, you know, maybe 10% uh, of the, the uh, you know, you always get the hardcore fans that will watch 90% of the fights. But this is uh, one of those uh, few fights, one of those rare occasions where you get uh, mainstream fans, you get casual fans, you get fans that aren't even fans of the uh, sport of boxing, but because their friends are watching the event, they'll come over, they'll watch it. It's a big party. It's Mexican Independence Day, September 15th. Uh, it's going to be in Las Vegas. Um, you know, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And, it's, uh, and, and this is really... Uh, a big shot in the arm for uh, for the sport of boxing. This is literally the biggest event uh, of the year and uh, quite possibly could uh, be the biggest event for a while. Time catches up to all fighters. Mm -hmm. Golovkin's definitely not a young fighter anymore. Uh, he's 36 now. Uh, just turned 36. Just turned 36. He's a young, he's a young 36. A, if you look at him, 36 light. <laughs> if you look at him, he looks 26 and he keeps a uh, very good, uh, keeps his body in very good shape. He uh, doesn't spend his money lavishly. He doesn't go out to nightclubs. He doesn't go out to strip clubs. You know, you, you see a lot of these boxers that just give uh, the sport of boxing or even being a champion just a bad name. And, Gennady, I think, is the complete opposite. I mean, any sanctioning body should be honored to have Triple G as their champion. They can call Gennady Golovkin their champion because he represents their world title, their world championship, and represents the top of the sport of boxing. And, um, you know, uh, to your question, uh, uh, 36, uh, the way Gennady trains, the way he lives, uh, the way he takes care of his body, uh, the discipline that he shows, uh, the sacrifice that he goes through, uh, the, and the commitment to the sport of boxing, the commitment to his fans. A lot of fighters, uh, when they sign for a fight, they go into a shell, they go into their training camp. The managers always say uh, it's more important to win the fight than to do the publicity, but Gennady knows it's his responsibility. He's got to promote his career. He's got to promote the fight. And he's got to win the fight. So it's not just he can focus on one or the other. It's a very a balanced uh, system. You know, he flew down to Azteca Stadium when the NFL was playing down there, when, in fact, the Raiders were playing against the Patriots. And uh, they brought him on uh, on the field as one of the Mexican heroes because he made a donation to the uh, 
uh, Carlos Slim uh, Earthquake Relief Fund uh, down there, and uh, he really has a strong connection with the Mexican fans and the Mexican people. And uh, when we're down there, uh, whether it's in the hotels or we're driving and the people wave to him and they really appreciate uh, the connection that they have uh, to Gennady. So um, I think your question was going in the direction of uh, is Gennady going to be as dominant now at 36? And uh, look, I think uh, strategically you can say there's definitely a reason why when Canelo was the WBC middleweight champion, he was the only champion from Mexico to ever vacate a WBC title. Uh, and there's a reason for that. They didn't feel confident that they could beat Triple G. It had nothing to do with a purse bid or a split or anything like that. We would have been even more, we would have been even more uh, accommodating to get that fight back then because that would have been that much earlier that Triple G would have gotten one of the big fights that he's always been looking for in his career. So really the excuse of uh, WBC gave him a deadline and that, that was all nonsense. We had an agreement in January where I signed it, Eric Gomez signed it, the WBC signed it, uh, saying that we would allow, Triple G would literally allow uh, Canelo to fight Amir Khan and then in order to build up the fight because that would be his first title defense as a middleweight champion and then that would build up the fight and then go into the Triple G fight. So all the other excuses uh, didn't make any sense. Uh, quite frankly, uh, they didn't feel confident and Canelo didn't feel confident that he could beat Triple G at that time. So they vacated the title, it took about, what was it, a year and a half, two years later. I have to give them credit at that point when they didn't have the title, there was no obligation to fight Triple G, but they did drive a hard bargain and that's when we had agreed to the 30% originally because they said, look, if Canelo's gonna get in the ring, he wants to get paid a lot of money. He made the most amount of money of his career. He made four times fighting Triple G than he did fighting Floyd Mayweather. So if you can fathom that, if you can put that into perspective, that's how much money Canelo made fighting Triple G. And and uh, the rematch is going to be even bigger. But uh, Triple G is very confident he wouldn't have signed for the fight if he didn't think he could win the fight. And uh, look, Canelo, you got to say, going 12 rounds with uh, one of the biggest punchers in the sport of boxing that we've ever seen, going 12 rounds being, what, nine years younger than Triple G has got to give him confidence going into the to the rematch and it's a huge opportunity for him. So it would have been silly uh, for Canelo and Golden Boy to turn down this opportunity, this huge opportunity for Canelo, uh, uh, not only to be the best, to beat the best uh, middleweight champion, but the unified middleweight champion and the ring pound for pound champion now. So um, it, it, there's really a lot on the line and a lot for both guys to prove in this rematch. Uh Word on the street is there's not going to be a promotional tour. Uh, do you think Canelo failing the test and all the media, all the press that's been covered on that, just the mere fact of signing the fight has created so much more hype than probably your last L.A. Live event? There's no question uh, about it. Uh, all the controversy that's gone on, you know, controversy sells. You know, that makes the headlines. Uh, you know, if you just watch the ESPN ticker, you know, regular ESPN uh, television that any cable subscriber gets, you know, when Canelo first failed the drug, uh, the drug test uh, or tested positive for clenbuterol, uh, that was the first scroll that, uh, you know, big news, Canelo test positive, right? Then uh, when, Gennady, when Gennady, we had the media day in Big Bear and Gennady reacted uh, very aggressively and he called Canelo out and said, look, he's disrespecting the sport. Uh, he doesn't think it was from Mexican meat. You know, he doesn't buy the excuse. If you go to Europe, if you go to the UK or Germany or you go to Russia or even Kazakhstan, <laughs> you go to any of those countries and you say, well, he ate Mexican beef and he tested positive. I mean, they start laughing at you. They're like, what are you talking about? That just doesn't make sense to them. So that was really Gennady's mindset and a lot of the feedback he was getting from his fans. And so he was pretty outspoken. So when, uh, when he said those quotes, then you saw the scroll again on ESPN, Triple G questions, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it was, uh, you know, very outspoken. And then, uh, and then uh, a day later, Canelo fired back at him on his social media and said some uh, expletives and that made headlines again. And then when Canelo got not only when after he tested positive, then when he got suspended, that made big headlines. And then uh, everyone knew the fight was canceled, and that was headlines again. So now this is one of those things that kind of feels like 
a shortened version of that long drawn drawn out negotiation of five years between um, Mayweather and Pacquiao, you know, which uh, was just like going back and forth and back and forth. And this this really only happened in six months instead of uh, six years. So the fans luckily are getting this fight, uh, the fight that they're looking for, but it really has uh, a much bigger feel to it. Both guys are, are uh, much better known after the first fight. After the second fight, we did the promotional tour. And now for this fight, you know, it, it just doesn't, it, we don't need the promotional tour. Everyone knows the background. Everyone knows what happened with Canelo. Everyone knows Gennady's pissed off. Uh, and they just want to see the guys in the ring. So, uh, you know, we'll naturally do uh, our part and do uh, a lot of uh, interviews and publicity on the Triple G side. You know, he opens up his training camp to Big Bear, to the media. Uh, he'll be down him down here. Jimmy Kimmel's invited him to come on to his show to do a segment. So he's really getting at that uh, really upper echelon of uh, media invitations. Like I said, he just flew out to, uh, he's flying back today from Moscow. He was invited to the opening ceremonies of the World Cup. I mean, he's really, uh, uh, he's, he was on the cover of uh, How Living uh, with a Bijan photo shoot. I mean, these are all things that are just uh, completely, you know, um, when, it, when you look at a boxing champion, uh, there's just levels above it. Uh, you know, there was a video that uh, was put out uh, from a Russian cosmonaut uh, with uh, the Triple G flag at the, and it, you know, in the International uh, Space Station. Space Station. I mean, that doesn't happen to to a boxer. So he's at just a, a different level, such a higher level than your ordinary boxer, your ordinary champion, uh, even a unified champion. You know, and and uh, you know, uh, all those things add up to. Uh, um, that strong uh, support of the fan base. Not only is he a great boxer in the ring, but he's a great ambassador for the sport of boxing outside the ring. And that's really what the fans appreciate, whether they're from Mexico, whether they're here from Southern California, where he's made his home now. He's been here now for the last six years, uh, living here with his family. And his, uh, his daughter was just born here in Los Angeles. His son goes to school here in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, Madison Square Garden, he's loved there in uh, New York, where we really started his career, because that's where I figured he would get the biggest uh, media attention, which is what happened, which allowed us to move his career a lot quicker than uh, normal, where you have uh, someone from Kazakhstan that nobody really knew here in the States. And, um, you know, HBO really uh, uh, helped uh, provide the platform, the television platform, uh, to build his career. and. Uh, now he's on that uh, HBO pay-per-view level where uh, we're projecting numbers uh, for pay-per-view that are going to be, uh, you know, probably the biggest uh, pay-per-view uh, event uh, of the year. So that's the level that uh, Triple G is at, and uh, you need to have uh, a foe uh, like Canelo to to make a big event like that. Canelo needs Triple G to be at a level of this magnitude for the event, and uh, Triple G, frankly, needs Canelo. But uh, this is one of those uh, uh, marriages or uh, combinations that uh, sells and, and what the fans want to see, and you know, each uh, brings a little bit uh, uh, to the table, or a lot to the table, which makes it, uh, you know, it's uh, Canelo plus Triple G doesn't just add up to a great fight, it adds up to a, a mega fight.